Hey again, everyone. Welcome back. So where we left off last time in order to solve this challenge, either filter, I had created a new array. I had looped over all of the individual elements in the input array, which were these numbers. And then for each number in that array, I had said, if calling the first callback that I pass into this function on that number returns a truthy value, then, uh, uh, sorry, or uh, calling the second callback that I pass into this function returns a truthy value. If either one of those returns a truthy value, then we continue forward with the conditional logic. So we look at the, the next line and we say into the new array that I've declared up top, push that particular number. Um, so for these four numbers in this inputted array, two of those numbers, 105 and nine, did satisfy one or the other of those conditions def uh, defined in you know, what, what the callback functions passed into this function actually were. Um, so we can, this is a fine approach. It's a little bit verbose. Uh, we can do a little bit better using some higher order functions that are specifically designed to uh, handle cases like these, okay? Get a little bit more light. So um, let's kind of take a step back and think about like what we're doing here in this particular problem. So we have an array of numbers and we are taking in an array of numbers and we're outputting an array of numbers. So to me, that's like a light bulb going off. I think to myself, okay, we're taking in an array and we're outputting in an array. Um, that could be a map, but we only use map when we are taking in an array of a certain amount of elements and the array that we output is going to be the same amount of elements. Now in this particular scenario, we take in an array of four numbers, we output an array of two numbers, so that's not necessarily true. So map is not quite the right uh, use case here. Uh, another one we could look at would be filter, right? And uh, this should be kind of obvious here, we, we are filtering, it's literally in the name of the problem. So what does filter do? Filter will take in an array of elements and I like to say kind of filter in a certain amount of those elements and output those elements in a new array. So we're keeping a certain amount of elements from the original input array. And based on some condition, we are either keeping or discarding those elements. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, we've just done it a little bit uh, with, with a few more lines of code. So let's see if we can actually refactor this using filter, right? So we can kind of keep in mind the same structure that we used here. We're creating a new array. We're conditionally pushing some elements into that new array based on some logic. And then at the very end, we are returning that new array. Now, what does filter do? What does the higher order function filter do? Well, when we call it on an array, which in this case, we're going to be calling it on our input array, array filter. A filter is a higher order function. It has in its definition, uh, a callback function. So this callback function is going to run on each element of the array that we call it on, in this case, array. And so like for each element of array, we are going to run some logic on it and either keep or discard it. And what filter is doing kind of under the hood is you can kind of think of it like this. Filter kind of under the hood is going to create a new array, conditionally push some elements into the new array, and then eventually return the new array. It's not quite that verbose though, uh, really steps one and three of this, right? Um, so this, this is step one, step two, step three. Steps one and three are really happening under the hood. We don't actually have to code those out. Those are kind of baked into what filter does. So what we're going to have to do here is basically only worry about line two, right? So we are going to conditionally push some elements into the new array. In other words, we're going to keep some elements 
based on some conditional logic. Well, what is that conditional logic? It's this, it's this here. It's where we are checking those callback functions against the particular number that we are currently looking at in the loop. Because remember, filter is a loop. Filter is a loop which loops over every element of the array that we call it on. So in this particular case, filter is looping over the elements of array. And on, e on any particular iteration of that loop, we're going to have to give the element that we're currently looking at a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it num again, because we are working with numbers. So basically what I'm saying here for this step two, right, is when do I actually want to keep this particular number? Well, I want to keep it if callback one called on that num returns a truthy value, or if callback two called on that num returns a truthy value. Uh, and now how do I actually sort of under the hood push this num into the new array? All I have to do is return it. Filter takes care of the rest for us. So what this is going to do is now when any of these numbers in my input array satisfy this condition on line 19, they're going to be pushed into the new array and filter is going to return that new array. So how do we actually access that new array? We can save it in a variable. We can save it in a constant. So I could say something like that. And then at the very end, we could return new array. Give that a run, we get the same output. Uh, we can just condense this a little bit by just straight up returning the result of calling filter on my array. So that would be my filter, which is probably the best particular use case for this problem statement. Now, uh, we could also solve this problem using reduce. So when do we use reduce? We use reduce, if you look at my other reduce video, we use reduce when we're taking in an array of elements and we want to return a single thing. We want to return a single thing. That thing can be an array. It can be an object. It can be a string. It can be a Boolean value. It can even be a single object of nested values. It could be a single array of objects. That's still just one thing. Uh, but reduce, the, the, the use case for when we want to reach for reduce is when we want to re return a single thing. And in this particular case, we do want to return a single thing. We want to return an array so happens that this array will have elements in it. So we could use reduce here. All I would have to do is do something very similar to what we do with a filter. So I'm going to say return the results of calling reduce on my array. Reduce, like other higher order functions, has in its definition a callback function. Uh, reduce is a little bit different from other higher order functions in that reduces callback function actually has two required parameters for us to map out, right? So what are X and Y here? X and Y are going to be, uh, first off, something called the accumulator. I'll get into that a little bit more later. The accumulator and a reference to the current value that we are looking at. So, right, again, reduce is a loop. So the current element that we are looking at on any given iteration of the reduce loop. Um, now, what is the accumulator? Remember that I said for filter, filter kind of creates a new array under the hood and then under the hood returns it out once we've done some stuff to it. Reduce is very similar, except here, accumulator is, remember I said that for reduce, when do we use reduce? We use it when we want to return a single thing. Accumulator, right, spelled out fully, accumulate. Or accumulate eh, something like that. You know what I'm trying to say. So accumulator is going to be a reference to that single thing. That single thing that we are going to populate. We're going to mutate. We're going to push some values into it based on some logic. Uh, and then at the very end, reduce under the hood is going to return out the accumulator. Actually, in this case, this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to have to actually explicitly return out the accumulator. I'll show you how that looks. So 
we can choose to, if we want to, this is an optional step, we can choose to define what we want the accumulator to start out as. In this case, I know that I'm building up an array, so I'm going to start it out as an empty array. All right, so that's how we define what we want the accumulator to start out as. So what do I want to do on every step of the reduce loop? I want to check if the current element passed into either one of the callback functions satisfies that condition. If it's truthy, then what do I want to do? Let's see. So if callback, remember that we're still inside of this either filter function. So if callback one called on my current element, if that is truthy, or if the result of calling callback two on my current element is truthy, then what do I want to do? Well, remember that I'm trying to populate, I'm trying to build up this accumulator element, this accumulator array in this case. So I need to push into the accumulator the current value, if it satisfies one of those conditions. Now, this is interesting because uh, when we choose to break out, reduce into a sort of multi-line statement like this uh, with our curly braces, we have to explicitly return the value of accumulator. So on any given iteration of the reduce loop, we have to explicitly return the accumulator out to the next iteration of the reduce loop. That's the only way it will keep whatever, it will keep a reference to whatever uh, values were previously inside of the accumulator. Okay, so now if I run this again, this is it, that's done. So if I run it again, same, same output, right? Reduce again, it will take at the very last step, right? At the very last iteration of the reduce loop, it will take whatever the accumulator is and it will return it out. And that will be our final output value, okay? So running it again, we get the same output, that would be how you use reduce, probably filter the, the best, the sort of um, best use case for this particular problem statement, but reduce works just as well. We also saw previously for each works just as well, just a little bit more verbose. Okay, so again, any questions about this, uh, DM me, leave a comment, um, let me know, happy to help out.